Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 3rd, 2017, and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 346, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Kane Lafferty, and I'd like to welcome you to day three of the Kane Kill Boot Camp, where I'm teaching you guys how to be the next big pro artist. You're going to go out there, strike out on your own, and become amazing. And today I'm going to be teaching you about the two golden rules that you are going to need to take with you on your journey. So let's go ahead and start with that, as well as, of course, this is a continuation of day two where we learned about getting our tablets. We want to learn about coordination because now we need to develop the skill of drawing on the table while looking straight ahead at our computer screen. And that can be a little bit tough. So today I was actually doing a little bit of doodling while I was waiting for my car to finish up with the mechanic. And you can see here, I've just drawn these pictures on a piece of paper and then I've just taken a picture of it with my phone. Let me show you guys a quick technique that can help you out with getting used to your tablet uh, that doesn't necessarily require you to know how to do perfect line art right off the bat, okay? So just sketch in your sketchbook as you normally would, and then I want you guys to uh, take a picture of it, email it to yourself, whatever you gotta do to get it into a digital format, and then drop it into Photoshop. I want you to hit Control A, Control C, and then you're gonna drag it over to, let's say, your new document. By the way, this is uh, some of the work I'm doing for Icons, Combat Arena, Wave Dash Games. And we're gonna be going into uh, the designs that go uh, <laughs> specifically for professional art because you guys know I like to use real world examples and I'll be dissecting that in just a moment. But first we gotta talk about this important thing. Okay, so your piece is probably gonna be way too big, so you gotta size it down a little bit. Then you can drop it in there like that. Then I want to direct your guys' attention down to your layer properties, which is right here. You click that button, and then set this to multiply. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to create a new layer. Do you guys remember what that was? That's Shift Control N, create a new layer. Let's just call it values. Values. And then what you can do is you can begin. I would highly suggest that you guys start by just working in black and white, just to get used to now watch what happens here. See, I can put values behind this sketch and they will not, uh, it's not going to obstruct the lines. The lines are now mixing with what is behind it. Now that is because we set the layer in front of it to multiply right here. That basically says uh, mix and multiply the values and colors of this layer with whatever is behind it, which is our values, okay? So this is a really cool way for you guys to get started with uh, painting, and you don't have to jump right into line art. This will help develop your coordination early on without having, uh, without you having to like draw a perfect face or you know do the characters that you're so comfortable with drawing in your sketchbook on the tablet at the beginning, okay? So I think this is a really nice way for you guys to not, in case you're getting frustrated, in case you guys have been frustrated for the last week, uh, this is a way for you to ease yourselves into it a little bit easier. Okay, uh, last thing I will say is that you can also change this because see, we have the scan and the values are kind of off. It's kind of dark, right? We want to change that so that way it's clean lines. So let me show you how to do that. Select your line art and then go up to uh, image adjustments, brightness, contrast. Now for this, I personally like to use check or I check use legacy, <laughs> use legacy, because what this does is, of course, what is legacy? It's the sword. The sword is the legacy, and that is, we should always check that. No, it just means like it's the old way of doing brightness contrast. But this actually works better for um, basically taking away the paper from your background and allowing it to just be the line art. Now careful, because too much, it'll wash it out. You want to find that nice, happy spot where there's enough brightness and enough contrast. Right around there, it looks like it works well. And you can see that's basically what I've done over on this side. So give that a shot, guys, and let me know what you think of it. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the main things. We wanna be talking about our keys to success, our two golden rules, balance and values. So you guys have heard this before, I've said it a million times, but just one more time, because I really wish I would have learned this early on, and that is the subject of balance, the subject of the sword, the sword that these characters are holding, you'll notice that it is divided in a very specific way. It's divided in a small, medium, large. Uh, it's divided into a small area, a large area, and a medium area. Now what is the significance of that? Well the significance is that all good art, all good designs, have these elements inside of them. And we like to call these a better way to understand this 
is to call it areas of rest, areas of detail, and areas of what I, for lack of a better term, I call filler, right? It's the neither rest nor detail, but it's just right in the middle. It's your happy medium. And that is a terrible value. That is a terrible color. There we go. That That is a nice looking sword. It looks like a popsicle. Looks like a delicious blueberry, strawberry, lime popsicle. And we like that, okay? So with all of these in place, we have our sword ready to take into the battlefield and become an amazing artist. But let's go ahead and translate that over to, let's say, yeah, Keenan, show us some of your work and show us, if this is such a great rule, how are you using it in your stuff? Okay, well, I'm more than happy to demonstrate that to you. <laughs> let's go ahead and move over to Zuron who has been done in black and white. But let's go ahead and dissect this. Let's go ahead and dissect areas of small details, such as, okay, well actually let's start with large. Let's start with large. Start with large. Now this can be areas of, large pieces can be thought of as like the silhouette of the character. The silhouette of the character, but more importantly, actual areas within that. So you can see right here, the hair. The hair on these outer edges represents areas of rest. These are areas for our eyes to relax, okay? And we like this because it goes back to, as I said, balance. We want to be achieving balance in all things. So, and, and this isn't just present in my work. This isn't just the way that I do it. All good concept artists are, are utilizing this rule, and I highly recommend that you guys look at artists that you enjoy and try to dissect it. You can even pull it into Photoshop and start doing this yourself. Start coloring over these pieces and trying to find, oh, okay, this is the large piece, this is the medium piece, this is the small piece. So the hair areas tend to represent my large pieces. Okay? Small areas, I'm sure you can already see where I'm going with this. Look at all, the, all these little details of this headdress. This is crazy detailed, right? But imagine if the entire character, if the entire character had this level of detail, it would be so confusing and weird to look at. Um, and this brings me to my next thing, my next point. And that is the small, medium, large effect doesn't just apply on a base level. It can repeat itself over and over and over again. Case in point right here. Look at this piece. Let's just focus on this piece for a moment. Let's go ahead and cut everything else out of here. I'm just going to outline this area of the headdress. Do you see how the same small, medium, uh, small, medium, large rule applies here? Well, of course you do, because you can see that the large area, the area of rest, is all this, this big piece right here. Then we have small pieces, which is like this little trim, and this little trim here, uh, these little bits here. But then we have areas of medium. Medium, which is like right here on this uh, frontal part. And then here, and here, and here, and here. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. Guys and gals is what I'm talking about, okay? All good art is a mixture of these things. And it can be repeating. It can be, be repeating itself over and over and over again, okay? So, um, but just for simplicity's sake, let's say that it just repeat, repeats twice within a given, say, you have the character on the character level, you say, okay, let's go to the headdress. Then within the headdress, then you can replicate the, the, <laughs> the rule over again. But going further than that, it, it might be like dividing by zero. It might be too, too confusing. But uh, just keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for that. Okay, going back to character level. That might actually help to explain what I'm doing here. So back to character level. Uh, we have these head pieces, or this ornament. This is still considered a medium piece. And then, look at that. Within here, we have these tinier pieces. Tinier pieces at work, small. Okay? So this is an example of the small, medium, large technique at work. Now let's go ahead and go to a different part of the character. Say this chess piece, which... Hopefully, looking at it, it is pleasing to you for more reasons than one. But let's go ahead and get to the design of it. Let's talk about the small, medium, larges. Okay, so I'm sure you guys can see this already. What are the large pieces? Where do your eyes tend to rest when, you, when you're done taking in all this detail? 
Oh, well, right here and, and here. These are nice areas of rest. Boom, boom, boom. All this stuff. All this stuff. And it doesn't mean that it has to be like an exact, right? All your large pieces don't have to have an exact surface area, but it's more of by relative. It's more relative in terms of the things that are surrounding it, the color, or sorry, the, <laughs> the shapes that are surrounding it. So, and then you can see small pieces, small, 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 small. And small can even mean the, it can even be the lines that go through it. Just because I say a small piece doesn't mean that it always has to be a piece of metal in this case, or a piece that's sticking off of the armor. It could be something as simple as the division of the, the metal here. So in that case, sometimes you can get away with just a small medium and then let the divisions of, or the cracks within it, be the small pieces. And then there you, oh, whoops, that was supposed to be blue. That was supposed to be blue. Okay, well, we switched, we switched up small and medium for this one. But regardless, so you guys can start to pick this stuff apart. And the most important thing, I will say, mind you, don't get too caught up in always feeling like, oh, it, it, oh I got my large and smalls, but there's not enough mediums, you know? It's more important that, that you have a difference between your larges and smalls. You want to have areas of detail and areas of rest. Medium is just that nice little thing that you throw in every now and then, okay? And that could technically be these parts right here as well. Again, it's not terribly set in stone, but it's something to keep in mind, guys. Keep this stuff in mind, okay? So there you have it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are feeling fancy, feeling fine. Feel this way all the time. Let's go ahead and get into our values. Now, values is interesting because values has a couple different meanings. And of course, we know values, or at least some of us know, <laughs> for those of you just getting started, values is a fancy way of saying black and white. Values, see how it's written here? It's written in shades of black and white. <laughs> and we are, of course, going to be utilizing that. And that is what I suggest that you guys start doing. Now for this exercise, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy over here because I want to color him I want to color him and I want to use just values. So let's go ahead and grab this entire sketch because we're going to be needing it. Over to the side. Boom. Okay. You can see, uh, oh, if you ever do this and it, and it goes all white, that's because your layer property has reset itself. You need to go back over here, down, direct your attention here, down to this menu, select multiply again, and boom, it's right back to normal. So let's go ahead and talk about values. Now values are very important because it allows our character to stand out from the background, it allows us to tell story, it allows us to add light. Now let's go ahead and talk about that. And the reasons why I want you guys to be focusing on learning in this manner. Before you get into colors, I know I told you guys to experiment with colors in the previous episodes, but and that's all well and good. If that's truly what you want to do, go ahead and jump into that. However, if you've, if you've been having a little bit of trouble with your colors, I would like to tell you that that is probably because you're not thinking in terms of values. You're thinking in terms of pretty colors. You're thinking in terms of vibrance and things that you'd like to see. But just in a similar way that we just talked about balance, we talked about balance with our sword, you also need to have balance in your values. You need to have balance in your colors. And if they're all too crazy, if they're all too bright, then you will have no, no variation, no contrast, and no balance, okay? So let's start by just painting in black and white because I think that's a lot easier for people to understand. And I know it definitely is for me, right? I, I'm a simple guy. I need simple terms, simple rules to follow. And so, of course, we're going to start very, very simple. And that is going to be with values. So take your character that you have drawn, whether it's digital or whether it is uh, sketched in your sketchbook and then transported over to, over to Photoshop. And I want you guys to create something like this. Create something like this, where your character is placed in front of, in front of a neutral gray background. Go ahead and do something like this. And if you'll notice, I've put the background on one layer. I'll lighten it up just maybe a tad bit. 
and then I've put the values for the character on another layer. And I'm hitting Control U to change these. Look at how I can just modify this using the computer to my advantage, using the software to my advantage. Don't worry about painting all that stuff all over again. So let's go ahead and get our character to a nice, happy uh, value where they pop off from the background. Do you notice how when he's brighter, when this character is brighter, it kind of starts to fade into the background. We can't see it as clearly. Yet when we darken it and we squint our eyes, now the silhouette, the outer shape of the character, is super clear. This is the first rule of values. And it's something that, I, again, I want you guys to be studying in your own works and in the works of the people that you admire and the people that you love. So let's go ahead and talk about values and lighting and how this is going to help you. Now the reason why I said to put a mid-tone value for the background is because I'd like for you guys to try out an experiment like this, and that is to light your character. You can even steal this one. You can even just be a complete copycat and just steal this one and put it up on the Kane Kale fan art. By the way, I have been noticing that the fan art thing on the Facebook has been mucking itself up, and we are going to fix that today. I'm going to be having you guys submit your stuff to Instagram from now on, most likely. And uh, But that'll be at the end of the episode. But uh, if you guys do end up doing this, in fact, you should be doing this because this is a boot camp. Gosh dang it. You should be submitting your work. Okay. Now I want you to, for the purpose of this exercise, make the sword the brightest thing in the piece. Now let me show you how you can do this. A couple things. So obviously you can pick white. Pick white and then lay that value onto the sword. Lay that value onto the sword. And then go in front of your lines, which should be, remember, they're set to multiply. Create a new layer over top of it and call it shine. This is going to be an overpaint layer. And what is it? Hey, look at that. We're still just using four brushes. I hope you guys downloaded those Kane Kale Essentials brushes. Again, link is in the description. Go get them, guys. They're all free. Go download them. I'm going to teach you guys how to become pro with just four brushes. Can you believe it? Now, uh, go to, okay, you see how I'm making it glow? I'm going to, I'm creating a new layer above my line art and I'm titling it Shine, okay? Now pick your soft brush and still with that white color selected, I want you to lightly press and make that sword glow. You can even grab your eraser if you're kind of, if it's too cloudy and you want to kind of pull back the, actually, let's just go crazy with it first. Let's go crazy. Let's turn it into a freaking lightsaber, okay? There we go. It's a lightsaber. Now let's say that you want to lower the intensity of that light. Well, you can do that with the opacity tool right over here. See your little percentage meter right over here? Go ahead and slide this back and forth. And what that does is real time, it's going to change the intensity of the light. So find something that you like right around there. That looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and begin lighting our character. So we're going to go back behind our lines. Let me go ahead and label these just for sanity's sake. There we go. Let's go back to values. Let's go back to our values layer. and Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's call this one light. Because what we're going to be doing is first, or for the first time, maybe for some of us, uh, we are going to be experimenting with light. Now let me show you how light works. So light is going to cascade all over this place, all over, right? And it's going to be affecting our character from the top, okay? Simple enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start lighting our, our character. We're gonna start lighting our character. Sorry, I had to burp. <laughs> so go ahead and start laying down some values. And you can do it in a cell shading type of way, that's totally fine. And if your character is cartoony, I find that this works a little bit better. Um, because you don't want to worry about all the intricacies of a human face just yet. Uh, we'll be getting to that in the future, but for now, let's just color our characters. Let's color our, our cartoon characters. If you do this on a real person, that's pretty awesome too. But for the purposes of this, we're keeping it nice and simple. Now see, look at that. Look at that. We have officially lit our character. Isn't that amazing? Let's go ahead and throw a little bit of detail in there, put some blush on the on the kind of nose area. I find that makes your characters look a lot more alive, even in a black and white state. Let's go ahead and darken this mouth down. 
Actually, I kind of like the way that looked when it was a little bit brighter. There we go. There we go, keeping it simple, keeping it easy. Let's go ahead and throw in a couple little details here, just because I'm a stickler for details. I liked that early piece. I like the anime piece, okay? The anime piece looks good. All right, so uh, I'm adding in a little bit of cast shadows. Again, that's a little bit more advanced. We'll get to that later. But for now, just focus on the light. Focus on lighting your character, making it look nice like this. Now, um, hopefully by doing this, this will start to get your mind in a, situated in a way that it can start learning about values and understanding why certain pictures appeal to us and other ones can look a little bit weird or strange or unclear. Uh, most often this is because the picture itself is unclear and that is because of values. It's because things are not reading clearly enough. You have to try to figure out, you ever look at a picture and you're like, oh that's what's happening. Like it takes you a moment to figure out what the characters are doing or where the setting is. Um, that's often because the, the picture is unclear. <laughs> If I can, that's often because the person speaking is unclear. <laughs> and um, so learning in this way, hopefully, will get your mind started, get your brain working, and hopefully be working a lot better than mine today. Um, and that is going to bring you guys a lot of joy, I think, as you begin learning about this stuff. Oh, and the reason, the reason why I had you guys paint on a mid-tone background is because we need the light to be able to show. If we don't have this background, do you see how now it's like it doesn't have that feeling of glowiness to it. We need contrast, which is again value. Once we put that value in, now we can see how bright that blade actually is. We can see how bright that blade actually is. And if I just blew your mind, don't worry, it's because uh, that is a completely natural feeling. I felt the same way when I learned about this. I was like, how do I make it bright? In order to make something bright, in fact, it was also Marino that taught me this. He's like, in order to make something bright, you must first make it dark. And I was like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> and this is what, it, what he was talking about. He's saying in order for something to be bright, there has to be something contrasting against it that is dark. So I hope that helps you guys out. I hope that just blew your mind like it did mine. And I want to see some cool pictures, people. I want to see some cool pictures posted to the Instagram. Uh, now, the last thing that I will touch on is that these characters, as you can see, there's a necklace that they're wearing. There's a necklace with a key on it. And another word for values is reasons. Now, this is a much more kind of motivational thing. <laughs> and that is that your values in your artwork are just as important as figuring out your values in real life. Again, I want to tread back to episode one. Always be asking yourself, what do you want to accomplish? Okay, What do you want to accomplish with your art? Who are you trying to work for one day? Or maybe you don't want to work for anybody. Maybe you want to create your own project. Maybe you want to tell your own story. Um, you want to figure those things out now. And uh, figure out if you want this to be a hobby and realize that there's nothing wrong with it being a hobby. Or if you are truly ready to make this a ritual, if you are ready to do this every day. And I say this kind of like, I say it kind of sarcastically because if I have to tell you that you want to do this, if I have to tell you to be like, okay, like I'm going to commit to this every single day, then I'm going to tell you right now, you're probably just meant to be an amateur. And that is absolutely okay. Because the people that are actually going to make it, the people that are going to be pros, I'll tell you right now, they're the people that don't need anybody to tell them anything. They're already doing it. They're already making it a part of their lives. The ritual has already been set in motion. They're always thinking about their next piece. Uh, they're always trying new things, right? They're getting inspired. They're trying new things. They're failing a ton. And then eventually, <laughs> sometimes people will come by and give them little tips and tricks, things that, they, things that will boost their learning experience. Those are the people that are truly going to make it. So if that sounds like you, I want to tell you that you're on a good track. I want you guys to stick with this program. Um, and for those of you that are just hobbyists, don't worry about it because you guys can take it as far as you want. Who knows? Maybe you might even find your you might even find your passion as you do this. I don't know. I'm just telling you from my experience. My experience was that I always knew I wanted to be an artist. I 
always knew that I wanted to do this. And I'm super happy that I can be here with you guys and teach you today. So with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. Oh yeah, last thing before I go, if you guys would like to take a closer look at all of these layers as well as the <laughs> Zurong piece, then you can head on over to Patreon where you can download not only today's PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past as well as the brushes. Well, the brushes are for free. All the other stuff is subscribed. By the way, thank you to everyone who has been subscribing to support the show. I love you guys so much. And lastly, I want to tell you guys about the new Lovely Lane because I'm going to have you guys start submitting to where the heck is it? There we go. I'm going to have you start submitting your stuff to Instagram and just tag it with Cancale Fan Art. And you guys can be featured on next week's show. And if you haven't, go ahead and head on over to my Instagram and check it out if you uh, like what you see then uh, that would be awesome. So you guys take care. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you stay awesome.